I couldn't take any more. I'm Thank sorry. You. I, I was, was I was I was gonna put in the chat. Drop a one if you want me to cut off the damn music. Yeah, yeah I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all keep I'm, bitching, none of y'all fixing. I really appreciate the effort, Tio. I do, Steve. You are <laughs> okay, okay. the wind when beneath you, my wings, certainly. When you think of coffee shops, what kind of music do you think of? I, I don't go into coffee shops. I don't know. Then why did I, you I name th- the show Coffee and Ham Radios? I thought that they did K-pop in those places. I, I he really doesn't even drink coffee. I will make a K-pop intro just for you. It's on. Oh, All right. oh my lord. Gondam style. Like opa, opa, Gondam style. I'm surprised Jim actually knows a K-pop song. Man, I liked that song. It was infectious. Kind of oh, like oh this, that this other thing that I had to take the penicillin for. I think I'm going to mute him. <laughs> oh, my lord. Evening. This is live from 7200, Fellas, folks. Welcome. How are y'all? <laughs> We're going to get some new music. Ape's going to make a K-pop dance intro where he will dance to Gonham style next week. That's oh. that's what I, what I think I Something heard. Something like that. Something like that. And he might be sober or he might not be when he makes it. So who knows? Right. How are y'all doing tonight? Ape? I'm doing great. Steve? Yeah. I mean, uh, posted a video earlier today. I think it was the first one I put up in about a week and a half. <sighs> I'm starting to get the fidget factor. The fidget so, from not posting videos? I was. I was like, I'm losing all my clout if I had any to begin with. <laughs> so I, I cut two thirds of my yard today and I took some painkillers. They should kick in in about 20 minutes. So. <laughs> Everybody oh, okay. be glued to your seats. It's going to get ought wild ought to, in here. That ought to be fun. Steve's going to start tripping or something on the, on the stream. This show is great. Now I'm going to tell you if you start taking any clothes off, the camera's getting cut off right then and there, buddy. Just hover over the dump button. That's right. So so you know, like hams have a storied history of being um, creative, engineering mindset, technical, smart people. It goes back to uh, the beginning of the 19th century, right, where you started messing with radio. And uh, the 20th century, I think. Yeah, whatever. And so they. you, you know, like you had to get a kit with all these parts and maybe take parts out of your TV and build a radio and cut the crystals. You had to use power supplies that weren't safe. It was just all this craziness that went on. So my buddy Stan, he was over uh, the other oh, day. Stan, here we go. It's going that guy. Uh, yeah. And, and he was like, you know, I'm just beside myself with the fact that I am a ham. Right, and, uh, you know, I've accomplished all these amazing things. And, you know, hams are really technically bright people. And I walk among them. And I'm like, fool, you can't even solder. I, I had to come over to your house to help you change the light switch. Uh, I, you soldered I, I on a light switch? No, he didn't, thankfully. But, it was uh, on a go box. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. This, this Stan, Stan guy. He this, started isn't, be, this isn't National Electric Code stuff. Yeah, I'm, I don't know about this fellow. I, uh, <clears throat> I think that's why we're in ham radio, because it still can be kind of dangerous, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know? Not as dangerous as it used to be. Well, no, no, right. I mean, I've seen some of those old radios like on Mr. Carlson's lab, that stuff he has with yeah. um, open wire wound contact points. And, and you're plugging that into the wall too, right? I mean. Right. Hot right. chassis. <laughs> did, you guys see the, did you guys see the thing where apparently this week everyone in the world figured out that mail-to-mail extension cords are dangerous? Yes. Oh, that yes, started yeah. on toads, didn't it? I, I suicide cords. Uh, suicide yeah, suicide cords. cords. It's They're come up dangerous. on Fox News. It's like, what is this? A new, did I miss a memo or something? Because so the average IQ is ninety. Oh my Remember, lord! How did those in order people to be, breathe and poop in order to be at the same average, time? It's got to like swing down low and swing up high. So like people like us bring it up. Everybody in the chat, you're my people. We all bring the right. average IQ <laughs> level up, making sure I'm not like being unhumble. What's the opposite of humble? See, I'm not smart enough. But then there's people that are down Arrogant. below that, like 40, you know, suicide. Well, cords. there's people that do dumb shit. There's no doubt about that. The The thing is, is that with that suicide cord, when you plug it in, the prongs on the other side become like a cattle prod, right? Instantly yeah. hot. Yeah. And they, right. can, they, they can light you up. And I think think that the the other one is, is that the cord is so short. People are like, I got to bring these this generator in the house. I'll just crack the window. And then uh, they end up gassing everybody. I, I, it took me a minute to realize how you were getting carbon monoxide poisoning from a suicide cord. I, I have a true story. Very short story. During one of the hurricanes years ago. Thanks, Mike. The ambulance crew was staying at, they, they had a bay in one of the to. local fire stations. Not mine. Just to make that clear. 
And so the power has been out for hours and hours and hours. And they fired up the generator that the fire department had. And this is the private ambulance company and they're crewed in the fire station out there. They pulled the generator inside and ran it inside the fire station. And these are two people who are paramedics. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't make you concerned for the human race, these guys passed this is why paramedic call 911. and put the generator inside the station with them. Quotas, and someone, Jim. Huh? Quotas. What? Quotas, Quotas. I That's guess. How they got there. Ape, Ape can hear me fine, man. I don't know what's going on with your ears. I can hear you. You just saw. He's got something jammed in his ears. What is that, a cotton ball? No, it's a monitor. Oh, I this thought you were like that old guy at the supermarket with the cotton ball no. in his ear. You, you no, this is about? this is what professionals use instead yeah, of having right. cans on my ears. Because then I get it? ear sweat and everything, <laughs> and it's funky. And yeah, somebody somebody, somebody came across somebody came across those knuckleheads and saved their lives because they would have obviously died. It's like, how did well, you, what? when power goes out, the, I was talking to a guy who's in the fire department. He's like, these people take their 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 charcoal grills in the house. Yes, they do. And, mm -hmm. uh, like I, I need to make my my my, you know my steakums. You know what? Heaven steakums. needs paramedics too. Yeah, yeah. yes, they do. Because them two almost got to meet Jesus. They almost and, made it. Yep. Yeah, they were almost there. Uh, he might have rejected them for being stupid. I don't know. I, I'm just amazed. And Ape, you're right. Oh yeah, I've seen that. There's a lot of really rural, economically challenged people in Southern Alabama. Mm hmm. And there's a lot of them that have kerosene heaters inside their house or open flame gas heaters like built into the wall mm -hmm. and it has fire like your stove burner except it's just fire and it's the same people that you roast have, marshmallows but there? it's going up a chimney there's no chimney they're burning That's open out. gas flame and then they've never it never fails that they always had a pile of clothes or boxes of stuff sitting within you know feet inches of the fuego it's like are you trying to die i anyway. think my propane grill runs better in the house there's not as much crosswind right it heats up much faster it keeps the house nice and warm it's amazing so we are doing still selling our apollo antenna oh, how many we got that left? is the, do you know i can look i don't know off the top of my head i've got I no think, idea i think we've sold about 12 or 15 so oh, we need to sell some more folks yeah, we sold one today, I think, is all I've seen today. I know it's all I've seen today. Um, so there are still um, probably 25 to 30 in stock at the moment. And this is the upgraded version of the Artemis um, antenna. So, Ape, what is the difference between this and the Artemis? The big difference is the stylized winder. Um, we have more rounded edges. Let me pull it up. Right, Mike. That's exactly right. Meth labs require heat. But the um, edges are more rounded and they're chamfered. And so that okay. will cause a little bit less fati uh, fatigue or strain on the, the wires you wrap it around there. More DB. And um, other than that, I think it's pretty much the same the same, the same antenna. Did, did we bump the toroid size up on that? We did no, not. We it's not. still a T140-143. Yeah. Okay. Now, the Kraken, when that comes out, it'll be there. Now, to get to this website, it is thebarefootguys.com. But you make sure you got to put the in there, thebarefootguys.com. Or coffeeandhamradios.com, either one. Okay. We're, we're going to kind of deprecate the Barefoot Guys thing. That was a T.O. idea. It was a really good idea until we realized that there was another meaning to that. And apparently it's a thing with a certain <clears throat> crowd. So Certain hobbyists. You do you, right? Right. Y O. Right. you. So, yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, Steve, if you logged in the Square Up site, we could find out how many we got in stock, but I'm thinking it's like 30 to 35, somewhere nice. in there. So we have plenty. We have plenty. And we would love to uh, give you one. Yes, this antenna would. is Ape and Steve designed. Chuck. Um, Chuck built. Well, Chuck designed it too. Yeah, we all, we all contributed a little bit. I didn't. I just did the website. <clears throat> back in yeah the well the, the thing that's cool about it is is that when you build it when you're done you have something that looks like it was off a manufactured uh, assembly line or something like that mm -hmm. and, it's, and it the, the cool part about it is is that you built it it's yours and you learn stuff as you, as you go along um that's kind of the idea behind all the antennas that we do different ones oh that we do. i did i did i got the <laughs> i have the artemis i learned that 
mm, maybe I should buy pre-wound toroids because, <laughs> God, I made a mess of that. Thank hey, you, Mike. Michael. Thanks, Mike. Awesome. Only hams, yeah. Only, oh, only yeah. hams.us, Jim. We still have that. We do have mm. only hams.us, don't we? I don't know. I haven't renewed it unless it auto-renewed and I wasn't it's paying attention. Year? That, that joke's a year Oh, yeah. Old now? It's, it's been a year. Wow. It's probably been two years. It feels years. like it was just yesterday. I feel I can probably get it again if somebody else hasn't grabbed it. But I, I don't <laughs> think I renewed it because I you guys were like, nah, don't care. So, um, Joe Brett up in the chat. That's amazing. It's pretty late for him. He must why, have been working tonight. Why? He must have had his supper already. Thank you for the contact, Joe. You're the one that put me over the edge on my kilo. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that before yeah. we start talking repeaters. So that was a lot of fun. I decided I was going to challenge myself. And I said, I said to myself, I said, Tio, get yourself kilo. And the only way you can do that is to sit your butt in the chair and work some contacts. And I'm, I'm not the kind of guy to, to do things on a small scale. And I figured I'd, I'm going to do this whole thing in a weekend. And I, I, my original plan didn't work out the way I thought it was. I was going to do this SO2R thing and run FT8 and sideband all at the same time, all from my camper trailer in a park. And the uh, Don's going to love this. The OVF light got me. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> you just teed that up for him. You I just did. teed that up. I did. <laughs> Looks like somebody found out what the barefoot guys is. Yo, did oh, did you yeah. really, Jeff? Oh, Jeff. We Jeff. warned you, son. You don't listen. We warned you multiple shows. Uncle, uh, Uncle Abe said, point, don't go no there. Right, don't look at the sun. That's right. Thanks, Mike. So. So did you do, you did a combination of FT8 and phone on your, on your, uh, Hilo weekend? Yeah. Not at the same moment, but I did right. a combination of both modes and multiple bands and a couple of different antennas. And so what could you have done? You needed, you needed bandpass filters if you're going to try and run SO2R, right? Yeah. So I tried to run non-harmonic bands, but the antennas were too close together. If I had more, so close. if I had more real estate and I was in a tiny camp site at a very large campground and it was one of those like we need to go we need to we need to do something in september and i was really I, what i wanted to do with the original thing and it's still on the on the table i just got to figure out a time to do it is i wanted to do a ham nuggets episode monday night live stream where we kind of just approach a topic and and get it done and see if we could do a live parks on the air activation from start to finish that'd be cool which mm -hmm. requires me to be in a park at like 8 p.m which i ain't going home after that um, so I figured I'd, I might as well camp. So we can't, we got there Friday morning and we left Tuesday morning, which would have covered nuggets, but there was zero internet, like not even a hope of internet. Awkward. And I brought three different internet devices. You brought the Starlink and you got nothing. I brought the Starlink and it let me down again. We that need to get so uh, sketchy monitoring the hurricane net. Oh, 14325. Let's see what they're saying. You just got all that wired up through your fancy uh, sound device, right? I did. I'm getting there. I had to replace my smart, smart plug on my uh, radio Size setup. Board? What do you mean smart plug? So I could tell the Amazon device to turn it on and off the power supply. Uh. <clears throat> so I can FT8 remotely from work. Don's Steve, you causing problems again five operators on five radios at the park the interference is them arguing over how to use it right Ooh, the Radio interference was better. probably don going those are nano vnas i don't trust those. i don't trust it i simply don't trust it i can't <laughs> oh my lord yep, okay i got to work a whole bunch of toads that was fantastic and i submitted the log as uh k toad so the club got uh credit for the kilo so we've awesome. got our first club kilo in the books, one of many. Well, now, do, have we gotten a report on Canada Joe? How is he? Because uh, it wasn't he. Didn't he come down to use toads? Was that last weekend? He or did guess? same weekend. Let me see if I can. He crossed the border. I didn't. He did. He did. He's in Pennsylvania. I don't know if he's uploaded his logs yet or not. He must have falsified well, his no, credentials. He can't upload his logs. He's got to give them to me to upload. So they're not ready yet. Okay. Hey, Derek. Because I hold the keys to upload the logs. So how does that? Um, we're getting way out of repeaters, but how does that? How does that work for the toads? If I wanted to, if I wanted to do something oh, as a yeah. as toads, how would you, we? You are a member of the toads Discord. You are a trustworthy, honorable ham, and so yeah. therefore you have been bestowed with the power to activate using the toads call sign. 
Once okay. you activate using the Toad's call sign, send me your logs in ADIF format, and I will upload them. If you put station operator as K Toads, KT zero ADS, and operator call sign as your own call sign, both of us get credit. So if you go and look at the Poda dot app website, you'll see that K Toads has a kilo, and you'll see that I have a kilo, and it's at the same park because it's the same person. Okay. So, okay. Yes, Carlos. I said trustworthy. Sorry, hey, Joe, I, I forgot hey, Joe to exclude Brett, you. Does the uh, does the Ham Radio Clubhouse? Do they do, does your club have a kilo award yet? Oh snap! I just had to say it. I'm sorry. I, lo- I love you, brother, but I just wanted to <laughs> wow. rub that in a little bit. Gets like has three. I don't know. You know he's going to remember that now for the next twenty years. You remember back on September twenty second when you said that to me? You think I forgot that? Hey, Joe Brett, I still love you. There you go. Joe Brett, public safety bros forever, man. Get that guy. Get that guy. I'm I'm looking. I see no kilo on W2HRC. Carlos Felix. How about, the chat. how about that? Okay. So we plan tonight to talk a little bit about repeaters. And Do it, son. We have prepared a slide That's presentation. Awesome. Because everyone loves Most PowerPoints. Why use a repeater? Repeaters allow... I'm not going to read no, the slides. Please, please don't. <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. We had a whole class on that in the Air Force back in the 80s. Don't read the slides. So every lieutenant that got up there, what would he do? He'd slide. So <clears throat> as hams, we use right. HF, and we talk about HF a lot on this show, but repeaters are also a big part of amateur radio. And repeaters are typically used locally. Now, there are some special case repeaters that cover a longer distance. Um, the six meter repeaters have a, a fairly long range. Um, and I don't really know a whole lot about six meter repeaters. There is a 10 meter repeater yes. in the Catskills in New York. New York. And I, can and so I was, I was talking to T.O. and he was messing around with something. I remember we were, it's 10 meters. We were, we were talking to try and mess around 10 meters. I'm like, dude, see if you can hit that repeater in the CAD skills. And I was like, um, hell, I didn't even know you could do repeater stuff on a 7300. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right, Joe, right? You're right. Um, anyhow, UK Chris, you know, UK Chris, the, uh, yeah. The he was able to hit hand. that 10 meter repeater in the CAD skills from, from Britain. From from from, uh, from Great Britain, so that's pretty cool. So those they, are. Go ahead. Go, well, the thing about the ten meter repeater is it's on Echo Link. It's Echo Link linked, so you can actually okay. listen to yourself and see how you would sound when you're when you're contacting it. Oh, that's and cool. It's it's got repeater offsets and tones and stuff too. And I was like, I I did not know that. I mean, duh. But I didn't know that HF could do that. So that was my first experience with that. Yeah, it's cool. The um, hang on one second. Andy says he hits it all the time. We're talking about the repeater, right? <laughs> Not, never mind. I'm... Out for a rip, are you? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> so what? A, a, basically, a repeater is to allow mobile and portable devices to talk to each other over a larger distance. Yep. And FM is basically line of sight comms. VHF, UHF is line of sight, right? And so there's a practical, physical limit that no matter how nice of a radio you have or how much wattage you're pumping into it, you can't get any farther than you can see around the curve of the earth kind of deal. Wow. And so repeater allows those line of sight comms to be extended. Typically you'll find most repeaters are going to be placed up on a, at Jim, least a tower. I'm if mute ape real quick. Cause you said something and he's getting worked up. <laughs> right, what did I say? Right. Hamstick? I don't remember saying hamstick. You're talking about the alleged curved earth. You, I didn't know you were, <laughs> sphere, I thought, I didn't know you were a spherist. I am a spherist. I am an unabashed spherist, and we were spherist. on the moon. Spherist. We're on the moon. There's two country, two kinds of countries in the world: those that use the metric system, and those of us that landed on the moon. Boom. Well, we were able to sell that. I, I saw I sent the video of that guy who swore we didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Liberty, right? <laughs> like playing cards with my brother's kids. So. <laughs> Woo, there went the train of thought right out the window. Thank God for slides. Well, the, so you're the, talking about the height of the antenna right on the repeater. <laughs> and so that does help us. Right? <laughs> right? Because <laughs> if, that's, if that antenna was on the ground, you I'm would have things bad. blocking it, like cars and trees and houses. Right. 
seven right. runs and 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 uh Stuckies and and uh right what is that place uh Bucky's but they Bucky, would all Bucky's. be blocking it right wah, wah. So, it, so what you want to do is when you put that uh antenna way up in the air your line of sight goes a little bit further exactly and 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 typically That's they also fine. try to put them up on elevation too not just correct on a tower or a, or on a tower like our, on a hill yeah that's that's optimal like the fire radios around here the one for my coverage area is on top of water tower which is on top of a an elevated spot um in the area so we get more coverage more better height is might mo better with antennas and then the repeater is going to have better. higher power obviously than your ht i think repeaters run about 25 to 50 watts usually for FM use, is that correct? I don't. I don't higher. know. I've seen hundred. Yeah, I would say it's like twenty five fifty to hundred. Hundred. Do they run them that high? I don't. I don't know. Hollywood with his fancy acronyms. I think some of them. I don't. I don't think it is. Uh, is typical. You certainly wouldn't see them much higher than that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> what a repeater will do is, if I can talk to To, HT to HT, we've got at best five six miles on a good day with the right terrain on our HTs, but if we have a repeater on us or in our area, then I can hit his radio, you know, if I'm 25 or 30 miles away because the repeater's halfway between us or some portion of that distance. So it allows everybody to extend their communications out um, a whole lot. <laughs> Well, when um, I was getting in the ham radio, my, my buddy was like, we, we need to buy these bow fangs or $25. And we lived about 70, 60, mm. 70 miles away from each other. And uh, we were able to get the bow fangs and then program them to the repeater and talk to each other via a repeater somewhere in the middle. Um, and I was, amazed by, I was amazed by that. I, I was like, what? I, I couldn't, couldn't believe it. It's it's really cool. And Sam has said something in the chat. He said the one here was running 50. He thinks they're stepped down to about 20 now. And Adam's saying they're one of theirs is a um, hundred Watts. So I, I don't really know. I have never, I don't hardly talk on the local repeaters and I have no direct repeater experience except sideways with the fire department stuff. And that's a whole different story. So, but again, it's way more power than you're going to have on your HT. And, and we're going to, the next slide will show us a little more information about this or one of the slides coming up. But um, a lot of end user radios have some sort of repeater functionality built into them. Um, the FTM 400 has what's called crossband repeat. And, I, and there's probably tons more. I can't think of all the ones that do. And even some HTs have crossband repeat in them. Mm -hmm. Does the 6X2, Steve? The GD88 has the GD cross band does. cross mode repeat. So you can cross mode from analog to DMR. So this could be your hotspot if you wanted it to be. Very if cool. You're within range of another. Like if, if you could talk to this radio and then this radio could talk to the DMR repeater, then this could be your hotspot and you could use a regular Balfang. Right. Well, I'm sure you get into simplex and duplex and all that, but some of those HTs, like the, <clears throat> the Anytones, they have a, um, forwarding repeater i think it's called send and forward where or receiving forward i can't remember exactly but what it does is it actually will record what you said up to a certain time frame and then play that back on the other frequency it doesn't do them storing forward that's what storing you're... forward yeah it doesn't do them at the same time um like most most of the repeaters right. that, you, that you talk to out there are, are are duplex so as they are receiving a signal they are also transmitting the signal Right, and that's that's an important point, and we're actually going to hit on that how that works, because if they're not if they're not set up right, they can't do that. Um, and the cross mode or cross band is the typical way you see these things set up on amateur mobile units, usually. And and like Steve's got some HTs. I think the six X two has a cross band repeat Adam, thing. Yes, that is the GD eighty eight. Where they'll go from you. HF to VHF and vice versa. I, a lot of them do not do UHF to UHF or VHF to VHF. They they specifically will right. only cross band, I guess, because they have to use a different VFO to do that. So uh, that's what a repeater basically does. And one last point on repeaters there. I know KB9VBR, uh, Michael Martin, who was on our last show. Saturday. On Saturday's show, yeah. He does... 
a lot of public service, public safety kind of stuff. And I know he did a show. He was talking mm -hmm. about using his his FTM 400 as a crossband repeater at an event. So they have guys working along. It's a race route or a bicycle thing or something like that. And they have a vehicle parked with a better antenna on the top of it and a higher power radio. So they essentially have a mobile repeater. And then all the guys working along the race route can hit that repeater, which sends it out to all the HTs so they can extend the range of all those HTs without a permanent install, which is very cool. <clears throat> yeah, here they have a bicycle race and the local club goes up and does the same kind of thing. But what they do is race they route? actually use the club repeater as opposed to... Okay, right. And, uh, and they can Just all talk to each other. A mobile, a mobile deal, yeah. And it's actually pretty exciting. It's, it's more exciting than your typical repeater traffic to listen to because there's always somebody wipes out there's and gets a bad case of the road rash. You know what <laughs> I mean? Right. So, Jim, we didn't talk about the budget for these slides, but uh, apparently you went over. Yeah, this went is over. fancy. Look at this. This is, this is courtesy of my employer's time, so I want to talk about it. The budget is black. It's like my soul, just like my shirt. Black. Like most, nobody most nobody guessed black tonight, by the way. That's nobody. right. Nobody guessed black. Nor is it a Columbia shirt. So, yeah. Just trying to mix it up, trying to keep you all guessing. <laughs> so this slide shows basic FM repeater operation. And, and like, you know, we already talked about, there's the repeater antenna and the whole operation up on top of a, a, a mountaintop or a hill in this, in this picture. And typically the way most FM duplex repeaters work is that they're going to transmit on one frequency and receive on another frequency, which is what this illustration shows. So this one is, he's listening on 447, 725. That's his receive frequency, but his radio is transmitting um, five megahertz lower on 442, 725. That's his HT. The repeater is exactly the other way around. So he listens on our receive frequency and transmits or receives on our transmit frequency. You know, they have this five megahertz offset. And to me, that seems crazy. So I, I believe that was a mistake because you know how like on the two meter band, it's 600 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. I, I, I bet you there was supposed to be somebody wrote 5,000 kilohertz and got five megahertz. But what they really meant to do was five. They thought 5,000 was 5,000 kilohertz has to be a mistake. It's just too far apart. There's a that's slide about offsets in a minute. That's privacy glass handy. It's I don't okay. think I investigated that specifically. I did wonder about it, and I think I read something that teased about why. But yeah. the other thing you'll see with repeaters on, on most ham repeaters um, is you'll have a tone. And this diagram here shows typically the way ham repeaters are set up. So you'll have a tone to open up the repeater or to, um, to get it to listen to you. And it's a subaudible tone. Um, it's on the next slide. It's like 67 hertz up to 257 hertz. And that's what the tone is in your radio. And that just tells the repeater, hey, I'm talking to you. I'm on the right frequencies. And here's the secret code. Listen to what I'm saying. And he will then take your broadcast and, like we talked about, in real time, shoot it out to to everybody that's listening on the repeater on that receive frequency. Most amateur repeaters do not have a receive tone. They just have a transmit tone. Right. Public some safety, don't have either, any, right? And some don't have any. It just depends on what they're doing. If you're if you're in an isolated area like, you know, Nebraska, where Ape is at. <laughs> Liberty um, caught it. Good job. There's buddy. like three people out there, right? And some goats. So there's no need to put a tone on there. It gets called privacy code, and it's on another slide in a minute, but it just it just keeps the repeater from hearing and responding to everything that might be on that frequency. And it's also kind of a way to reduce uh, potential interference. And there's some, there's some slop in that tone, so the repeater may have a 100 hertz tone, but it may be like plus or minus 15%. What is he saying is wrong? So Liberty Cave is saying yeah, the diagram Liberty, is wrong. Liberty's right. The diagram is wrong. What's wrong with the diagram? So both the... I did not draw car, this. I stole this off the internet. Both the car and the person would transmit on the same frequency to the repeater. The repeater would then repeat out on the other frequency. And the diagram shows ah, you sure does. crossing. Sure does. 
the the listener always transmits on the same frequency the repeater always transmits on the same frequency and that's and they switch so that you can have the the filters right block out the other signal i right. could be wrong here but they both have a repeater input of 442725 so the writing on the left is correct the writing in the picture is wrong well no, no. they just changed the colors liberty's wrong they're the, correct. The diagram looks right to me. Yep. The receive frequency is 447, and the transmit is 442, which is 5 megahertz lower than the receive. Ah. That's correct. They just changed the colors. Nice try, LC. I did steal it from the <laughs> internet, though. No kidding. No charge. <laughs> we're going to have to send you a bill. Yeah, I thought you, <laughs> really? I thought you drew that. You know, I trusted you, too, Liberty. I, I did not draw this. I, if well, I drew this, if I drew a picture of you, me, and Steve... Except for Steve's being taller, they would look the same. So, <laughs> well, what I what um, what's confusing about it is the colors of the arrows. So the red yes. is the transmission from the dude walk the pedestrian mobile, and yeah. then the blue is the transmission all the way through from the from the dude and the creeper in the car. We, yeah. We've been on topic for about fifteen minutes now. Thank you for the breakup, Liberty. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Speaking of breakups, um, you might you guys might notice Chuck's not here. We've got some news. Yeah. Is it too early to share? Nah, these Good. guys are family. Just tell them. Yeah, Chuck will be back on Saturday. <laughs> no, no, he, well, he's not. He's not going. No, be back he's on not Saturday. back on Saturday. Uh, uh. Dude, I was taking a drink when you said that. <laughs> he's going to be back the following Saturday. Oh. You have to. So, have yeah, the that, that looks thing. about right. The the um, the one thing. Have you seen where they have uh, these? Uh, it's usually the lower end and I'm not saying that judgmentally uh, radios, they have a reverse function that reverses your input and output frequency for your mm -hmm. repeater programming. Talk and then around. you can, yeah. Not talk. Is talk it around. different than talk around? It's talk around. So it's when you, you're transmitting on the repeater output yep. and not going right. through the repeater. So if you really, really want to upset folks on a repeater and a repeater owner, that's a surefire way to do it. It's just <laughs> get on there and start talking on the repeater workaround because or talk around, because what will happen is, is folks in that repeater area who are in your range will hear you just fine. Mike, they're going to go to reply back on the repeater and be talk, and they're not going to be talking to anybody um, because you're not obviously on the repeater. So it's a cluster of a situation. And the other pro tip, and this was something that would, that was kind of like light bulb moment for me is the exact opposite of that. You can listen on the input of the repeater just to mm. verify that your signal's getting right or, you know, am I closer to to you than I am to the repeater or things along those lines? Because it's just, they're just radios, guys. Yeah. Um, so you threw me off with the reverse thing. We, I call it talk around. It's it the repeater. Around. Yeah, the repeater output side. So fire department use, they, we have what the channel was called fire ground, but it was our repeater output side. And we used it on the fire ground because I could hear everybody on the radio and they could hear me because we're talking on the repeaters output. Now we're the only ones on our repeater. So there's no other users of this repeater except my department. But yeah, so dispatch might not have been able to hear you or the dispatch did not hear us jibber jabbing about fire this and hose this and whatever, but I could still hear dispatch in my ear. So if I needed to talk to them, I just had to change channels back to the regular repeater channel and then I could hit them up and all my guys would hear that. So that's how we use the output side. You have to be, again, it goes back to straight FM radio. You got to be line of sight, four or five miles max range kind of deal. Yeah, and there were some cockamamie excuses as to why you would need to do that. That used to talk around, but I don't remember what it was. Because I mean, you can, you, you can, it doesn't really affect anybody unless they're within your FM radio range, but unless you're mm -hmm. a sad ham. Yeah, I guess if you're a sad ham. So I don't know. Well, see, like that's uh, like my theory around if I hear somebody who's got it running a pile up, I'll just go on that frequency and start responding to the to the people who are responding to the guy, right? to the guy with the pile up. That way, I'm, I'm, just I'm offloading some of the work. Right, right? I'm offloading some of the work. Right, because you are a doobie. Right, a helper. Kinda. Trying to help people out. Ape is well, it's a giver. better is when you relay. You, you know, you're just relaying the calls over to him because he couldn't hear them. <laughs> right. I'm just trying. He'll, to, he'll get credit right. for those calls. You know, just on the needful. Awesome. Right. Just on That's the right. Needful. That's right. So here is uh, kind of an eye chart. 
Um, I couldn't find one of these that was laid out sideways. All I could find was vertical. So and apparently hipsters... To switch it? Hips, no, because it was an image. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could have typed it all in a spreadsheet, but I wasn't nearly that motivated. We, we didn't get enough super chats to type this spreadsheet. Out That's right. Right. We just had to copy and paste. That's right. So Y'all want something beautiful. We all on that picture. Right. <laughs> so... This shows the offsets that are typically used here in North America, and they're going to be different Where in matters. the UK. I wasn't going to say that, but it, it kind, of goes, <laughs> kind of goes without saying. So this is the typical offsets that are used on North American repeaters. And the two things that I thought are the most common thing you see, and I, I know nothing about six-meter repeaters, so there it is. There's the data. But the two-meter stuff, there are some gaps in there. Uh, for various things, and it's in the ARL band plan what all that stuff is. So in the two-meter band, it's not necessarily all two-meter repeaters. And what you'll see is below uh, 147, it's a minus 600 kilohertz offset, and above 147, it's a plus 600 kilohertz offset. Which is, the, which is the accepted practice. You still might see right. something different than that. Right, that's... That's the standard kind of deal, but right, it, it could absolutely it doesn't have to be that way. And I suppose if you're in an area with a lot of repeater traffic, you may need to be the odd man out and have a, a negative offset when you're in positive territory for reasons. But well, I don't want to sound like Liberty Cave, but mm -hmm. this chart is missing the 900 megahertz, 33 centimeters, right? I did, didn't have a it. lot of things, but it's okay. Again, stole off the internet. Um, so then you have the the um, 1.25 meter band and you have the 70 centimeter band. 70 centimeters is generally plus five or minus five. Um, I think it's generally minus, minus five, as far as I know, everywhere. It is in the public safety band, everything's minus five. But the transmit is five megahertz higher than the receive. My Yesu, I just typed a frequency in, and it somehow is magically aware of whatever. Right. It is. My ICOM does that same thing. I was going to say that yeah. your higher quality radios that you pay a lot more money for will do that <laughs> than a Fang. Yes, um, they do. You got to do it all manually on a Fang. That's why you get that discount. Right. <laughs> right. That in the high quality 3D printed case. So yeah, you're you're almost all your radios have auto offset capability, and a lot of the C, almost all the CPS software, even the weird off-brand TYT CPS software that comes with those things will do offsets, some of it. So what are we looking at here, son? Well, so, so the repeater transmits on A, this is kind of a slide that should have gone with that other chart, but the repeater transmits on A and receives on B. So like Ape had mentioned, the, re, the a real repeater is transmitting and receiving Sometimes at the same they time. Do jam scan. Do what? James can't ask a question. He said, but do oh. the fancy radios auto detect the tone for transmit? Sometimes they do. Some, yep, sometimes, sometimes they, they do. do. Yeah. Um, I, th I think they also have a tone search feature. Yes. On yeah. Some they, of like them. I think the seven, the 70 D I believe has a tone search. I think. That's yeah. My Kenwood said. does. I know. Um, I haven't looked at the Yesu. I got a five D here. It probably does too. So anyway, the repeater transmits on a and receives on B. The reason for that is a couple reasons, but mostly it's just literally the separation between the transmit and receive frequencies since the thing is doing this at the same time. And that removes some of the problems of desensitization, moving those things apart. Where are you and at, this is, Come join us. This is where I think Ape was talking about, he thinks the offset is a mistake. I think it's dependent on frequency, possibly. I might buy the mistake, but the 1.22 wasn't much different. Well, he, he'd be able to tell you if the 70D's got tone search. So if you look at the the 222 megahertz band, it's 1.6 megahertz. So I, it, I think it is frequency dependent. That would be my guess. Uh-oh, Joe Brett. The lights were on and the door was open, so I don't know what you think you saw in that cabin, but there was nothing going on in mine and Steve's cabin that y'all couldn't have walked in on. Nothing that couldn't have been interrupted. And by interrupting, right. when, they, when they invite you to walk in, that's where like the 
you know, Jim was accidentally going to drop his towel around his waist. Oh, well, what I did to see you. It was an accident. You know Are I mean? you like, here to fix the plumbing? <laughs> right. Don't, it's the don't fall for it. Pizza's here. So because of that offset, that removes some of the sensitization issues because you're not transmitting and receiving right on top of each other. Then you have the duplexer and filtering, and this goes to you'll have a bandpass filter for your transmit frequencies and a bandpass filter for your receive frequencies, a very tight filter to help reduce any kind of sensitization between the, the transmit and receive equipment. Yes, yeah, that's got to be on point. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. Right. Right. And, you know, I don't, I've never tried to do the cross band repeat. And that may be why most of this um, consumer ham gear only does cross band as opposed to, you know, UU or VV kind of. Well, it's all workaround right, stuff. <clears throat> you can even buy like a little magic box that does the crossover connects for the Balfang. So you can plug two Balfangs into uh, into this box, and then you all of a sudden you have a repeater. So I, a couple of years, I mean, it's probably more than a couple year, years ago, I went on a man camping trip to my friend's cabin uh, deep in the woods. <laughs> I'm blown up. D <laughs> deep in the woods. And when I got there, they had a Pelican case with two Balfangs, two antennas and a solar panel in front of it. And they're like, oh, we built a repeater. None of these boys had a had a license, you know, and they strang it up in a tree real high. And I explained to them, I was like, you're, you're not allowed to use this. I'm not going to talk to you on this because you guys don't, aren't licensed. You know, they're like, oh, well, you're, you know, I'll buy the book and all this stuff. And they're like, well, can't we just use your license? I was like, no, I'm not going to tell you what it is because then you're going to keep using it all the time. This is why he doesn't let his call sign out. Right. 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 There are open warrants with the FCC for your <laughs> for your arrest. Right. So, um, you know, you really are in Nebraska. More, a, That's where you're hiding. I got right, there's it. A, now. There's a there's a few there, there's a few there's a few of these uh, ways that you could cobble together a uh, a uh, re homemade repeater. Well, you know, you mentioned that, and I think I have seen some Fang Peters on YouTube that are literally Fang a Peter. A Fang of Peter. They're literally like two fangs, pretty much duct taped together or something. Fang, fang, fang. It's no, it's easy to do. I mean, it's 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 beyond easy to do. Yeah, John John nailed it. It's it doesn't have the filtering gear, so that's why they don't do in band repeat, which makes perfect sense. That's what I figured it had to be. If I had Googled, I would have known that. But Andy's right. We're just in three different rooms of the same house. <laughs> right? <laughs> Y'all hush. <laughs> My wife is going to get up. What are, are you talking to me like that? <laughs> are you telling me to hush? Where, where's my rolling pin? <laughs> uh, she knows where all the boom sticks are, too. That's the more worrying thing. Mm. Although I don't know if she'd figure out the safety or not. So there's a plus there. <clears throat> so here's kind of a, a diagram of how the duplexer and filters are set up on a typical repeater. Um, and I had to give credit to this guy. It was uh, He released this and said, give me credit. And that was exactly his signature line, David pseudo Jordan, artist. pseudo artist. Nice. And I don't know if he had a call sign because he didn't have it on the article I read, but this is live off of Wikipedia. So like we talked about, the repeater antenna is up high to get as much range as you can. And there's actually a formula for this, and I used to remember this, but it's like for every time you, to a, to a limit, every time you double the antenna height, you quadruple the range. It's a... Some sort of square law and i cannot remember it well enough to explain it but you want height so the duplexer is what's connected to the antenna and that shows like it says in the, the diagram here that's 50 ohms at the passband frequencies of impedance and then you have the transmitter and the receiver also hooked into that duplexer again with your filters that are only going to be very tight on either Either the specific receive, specific receive frequency or the specific Andy, transmit. Like you're thinking. Well said. Frequency. Well said. Right. Make me say it again. I don't know if I can. Do you got some pictures of your cans to share with us? Who, who are you talking to? I you? was talking to you, Jim. My cans. <laughs> you're, the one with, you're the one with the picture. Yeah, the duplexer. What do no. you think I was talking about? My headphones that I don't wear most no, of the time? No, no, The The filters that they use for repeaters oh, to keep the frequencies out of each other. No, those things are all out in the shop. I don't I don't have any. I mean, I don't have anything that's really made for a repeater anyway, really. But 
Jim's just not paying. But I mean, if you if you look on um, Steve or Ape, one of y'all can go to um, DX Engineering and pull up a duplexer on there. Oh. Oh, TC Fitz, thank you. I'll see you on TV replay, TC Fitz. He Appreciate needs it, brother. Some milk. He needs sure does. Oh yeah, that's that's not working right. I gotta re-upload that. Whoops. I told you and you were like, it's Santa Auto Loop. You're being on Mandy. No, no, Candy I was playing whiny. the other one. I was playing the milk one, but it wasn't uh it wasn't milk. It played milk the other day. Yeah, I know. Somebody screwed with it. I don't know. I mean, not me. I just posted a link to Toads. It's our Discord where we uh, spend a lot of time arguing with each other and posting pictures of food. Kind of like right. you might want to, yeah, You might want to check it out. There are actually some hams there that will answer ham related questions. And it is the uh, friendliest group of hams inside of QRZ, which isn't saying a whole lot. And so, I mean, uh, we have our days. Right. We have our right. days. Don't post any pictures with food having canned peas in there, and you'll be all right. And if you're going to put potatoes in the picture, it <laughs> needs to have what? Gravy. Ape? You can't, gravy. You can't, you can't post gravyless taters. That is wrong, wrong. I personally think canned peas, or I think any kind of pea is wrong, but that's a whole other story. That's a whole different show. <laughs> well. So... Uh, Here's your tones. So we, we talked about tones. Um, the tones are between 67 and 257 hertz. And it's called subaudible because you can't hear it. Typically, what we use is CTCSS. And um, John, if I start making some lies here, you jump in and, and correct me. So the tone, like I said, allows the repeater to take the transmission to open the repeater. You'll hear people call it that. Um, there are different kinds of tone systems, PL tones, CTCSS, DCS. There's some specific uh, Motorola and um, Johnson kind of vendor specific things that some of them use, but it's just a subaudible tone, no matter what they call it. Um, the um, This is basically the same thing as the privacy codes that you see in a GMRS or FRS radio. When you buy those in the blister pack from Walmart and it has 30 channels or 25 channels or whatever it is, but then there's like 99 sub codes on it. Those right. are privacy codes. Those are PL tones of some sort. Right, well, they're like my blister sort. pack radio has 400 channels. Right. It's the same 25 all with different tone combinations. Right. That's exactly what it is. The channel is the same. The tone is different. And for what it's worth, that tone is not any kind of cryptography or scrambling your voice or anything like that either. All that is is a tone to open up any radio on that frequency that's set to that same tone. So if you have a scanner, you know, any kind of scanner, you can monitor the FRS and GMRS channels and you can hear Muffy telling her husband he needs to get mowing on the grass faster or something like that. So let me see. If Regardless I, of the tones. If, let me see if I'm saying this right. If I have my radio and it's tuned to a particular frequency and I don't have any tone set on that and you transmit on that frequency with no tone, obviously I'm going to hear it. If yeah. you transmit with a tone, I'm going to hear that too. If I put a tone on my radio, then I will only hear your transmissions yeah. with right. that tone. Right. I think right. that's the confusing part for folk. And if you have a scanner... So, like, I have the 996P2 here, which doesn't really matter, but this would be the same for that handheld like that so. Ape was doing a video on um, three or four weeks ago, the 125AT. A lot of scanners will do PL tones if you want. Um, when I say PL, PT, CSS, whatever, tones, they'll do the tones or not. So, if you're listening on a scanner, it doesn't matter that Ape has code 47 in his radio. If he's on a GMRS channel and you're scanning GMRS, you're going to hear him no matter what code he's got. It just means that nobody right. else is going to hear him unless they have secret code 47 on their GMRS radio on that channel. It just it allows the communication to happen only on the radio. It is not crypto. It doesn't encode anything right. at all. So the other thing is that like typically with GMRS and FRS radios, the vendor the vendors, it's not interoperable between them. They don't use typically the same code 40 on a 
Motorola is not the same as Code 40 on a Baofeng, potentially, kind of thing. It's the same kind of deal as a repeater tone, but they just don't, it's not really standardized across across vendors. So, um, oops, too fast. The other thing, so like with hams, we don't generally have a tone on the receive side. We have a tone to open the repeater, no tone on the receive side. Some repeaters, again, my background John, with public safety. Ham radio's channel, please. Um, my background with um, public safety is the fire channel radios all had a receive and a transmit tone. Now, again, if you had a scanner, you could hear it. It didn't matter, but right. the radio itself would not key up or receive a transmission without tones on both sides. Any questions on that? You I explained it much better than I did, Abe. It's very good. I hadn't been keeping up with the chat. I don't know if is there any questions in the chat. Well, Jody here is not asking a question, but more making a statement saying upskill scanners and some transceivers will even tell you what subaudible mm -hmm. tone is in use. And yes, that is correct. Very yep. handy, very handy feature. Yep. And, you know, if you're, again, if you're in a busy area and there's multiple agencies sharing one repeater, which used to be the case here on analog VHF, I may not want to listen to the garbage men talk. I only care about the sheriff's office. So I would program my scanner with the sheriff's office PL tone so I don't have to listen to the garbage man kind of deal. I like listening to the county dump. That's one of my favorite channels. It's, 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 you're trying to find and, some and cool stuff, dump, right? You're just trying to hide that you're a foamer. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I can't believe you've never heard that term until I said it. No, never I heard didn't. it. Never heard it. I thought you were train which spotters, foot flat which apparently doesn't mean I, that thing. Holy moly. All right. I, I just, I'm surprised. So John sent me a picture of his cans. I'm getting ready to share this out. Y'all, y'all hang tight. Oh God. I mean, what you and John have is special. Don't cheapen it. No, oh, don't you worry. We still have a lot of other special things. Ape, you're muted. If you there's some other there's some other pictures that uh, he's not going to share. Okay, thank God. So repeater etiquette and usage. Ape, how do we get on the repeater? What I do is I, I go CQ. in there and I call CQ. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. <laughs> and you get all the old people to come right back at you. I sure do. These, these are John's cans. These are the cans I was looking for earlier, Jim. Oh, oh yeah. Some nice cans right there, boy. That's a, John. That's a nice are, rack, too. That's a great rack you got, John. That is right. Great A cans on you, son, right there. Yeah. Woo, look really at that distance shot. You got a wide too. angle. John, is this ham repeater stuff or is this public safety repeater stuff? That smells like yes. government. That's a lot of cash right there. It says Duracom. It doesn't say System Fusion. I don't know. That's his personal personal. That smells repeater. like government money there. Some nice looking cans. Anyway, now those are the filters or the duplexers yeah so the signal goes into the center and then one can filters out above 600 the other hand filters out below 600 and then it goes out the same antenna thanks john commercial stuff yeah i so that's just filtering and so it is filtering and duplexing is what you're saying it's, it's the duplexer it's it's filtering the input signal from the output signal of the repeater okay and let me let me share that picture again um because there's some stuff to talk about there window that window that window Boom. let's talk all right so let's talk these these little these little black knobs up on top here i don't know if you guys can see that mouse cursor or not uh let's let's do some let me embiggen your uh, video there buddy there we go so these little black knobs here you can you can kind of move in and move out and that actually changes what part of the frequency is being filtered out so you know a typical repeater around here is like 145 25 145 85 and so you're filtering out that 600 kilohertz frequency from the other 600 kilohertz frequency so these are basically bandpass filters okay which is what we saw in that slide yeah exactly perfect now what is all the gear in the rack over there john is that the repeater controller look at them big old jubilee clips on them cans Gotta hold it together, man. Right. So you'll have one for the input and one for the output. And it's really hard to follow the wires on the screen, but you'll see you'll see a wire coming in and then it goes into each can and then you'll see another wire coming out. Coming out. 
I wish we had a telestrator function on this uh, on StreamYard. That would be all VHF repeaters. Okay. I, I could, but, you know, low budget show. Right. I got in trouble for the slides, so I'm afraid to find out what a telestrator would cost. So repeater etiquette. You are required to ID every 10 minutes. It's no different than HF. And this goes for digital as well. Um, just your call sign. You don't have to say KN4YCD for ID. Just say your call sign. That's there's, all you got to say. There's one more thing you need to do when you're giving your call sign on a repeater. Please you need copy. To make sure, you need to make sure that you're doing it before the other guy does it so you can make them feel guilty. You can you got to yeah. one-up them. <laughs> like I, that's right. I remember to ID. Where's yours? Okay, that's K9G right. G for ID. And if you and if you just are the only one doing it, then good for you and keep doing it, son. That's all I'm going to say. Because just like seventy two hundred, I hear a lot of these guys. It's twenty thirty minutes between them remembering to do it. So should you give your call saying your call sign uh, phonetically? So would you be like Kilo Taipei Zero Antwerp Detroit Sugar? Could be. I didn't see anything that said one way or the other, and I've never heard it phonetically locally on the repeater. I see your K and four YCD. Mm -hmm. Although your way is pretty good, Taipei, that's excellent. So I, I know I make sure do it people when understand. Like, when I'm making the initial call to say that I'm monitoring the frequency or something along right. those lines, because I want to yeah. put a long string of audio out there so somebody can hear it, get off the pot, walk into the shack, pick up the mic, and then come yep. back to me. But I've off seen people, pot. well, you know, whatever kind of pot you're talking that's about. That's a Yankee word, man. That's great. I haven't heard that one in a while. Nobody down I, here says that. I, the head. They I've call it the commode. The commode. I've I've seen people. That was awful, Tony. I've I've seen people go, KM9G okay, monitoring. <laughs> Who was that? Right. What? <laughs> I don't want to talk to you either. Well, another thing is a lot of people go in there and they'll be like, "I need a radio check. Hook me up with a radio check." That's the secret. And, yeah, and that actually gets folks worked up because they want you to say signal report. Now I don't care either way. I'm I go no, along to I'm get along. I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm a people person. But you uh, are. You're a giver. So, yeah, some people will get worked up over that. Well, and it, it's what you should say instead. I mean, if you want to, if you literally want a signal report, why would you not ask for one? And well, so there's I, a there's a trick. If you say you know KM9G monitoring, nobody's going to get back to you. If you say KM9G right. testing out a new antenna. How does my signal sound on this? But everybody wants to tell you how much your antenna sucks. Then right. they'll come right back to you. Otherwise, they just like whatever. I don't want to talk to him. Now, if. You if you say KN4YCD, I got this brand new bow fang. How does this sound? It's breaking up. It's breaking Brilliant. up really bad. I can barely hear someone talking on the repeater. I can't tell if he's opening it up yeah. or not. See, I like to get on there and I'm like CQ, 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 two meters, calling CQ, two meters, Kazakhstan, Tango, zero, Africa, Denmark, Sweden. And, um, <laughs> See, see, if anybody comes you got to write that down before you say that, don't you? Because I get myself he, confused. I, look, it's right here, son. I got it written down. That explains it. <laughs> but uh, Kazakhstan show prep. <laughs> right, and you just go in there doing that. Somebody bound to come back and tell you you did it wrong. We can afford right. pen and paper, right? Um, ten codes. Don't use ten codes. You ain't in CB. You know, um, the article I was reading, they said it sounds like 20. police or fire or CB lingo, interchangeable. And ten, the thing with 10 codes is 10 codes vary from region to region. Heck, here in Montgomery County, the county uses a completely different set of 10 codes than the city fire department. If I told really? the city fire department I was on scene at a 1050, they would think I was at a uh, a boom threat. So 10 codes are not a good idea, especially across regions. But it's also CB lingo. Um, Q codes, you know, QSO is a good one if you use it sparingly. I have no real problem with Q codes, but unless somebody's keeping it to a minimum, I'd get a little aggravated, I guess. I know what QTH is and QSO, and that's about it for repeaters, I would say. Well, the, the thing is, is like I don't, even, I don't know why people use use it on HF. They use the Q codes. To me, it, you know, it's just silly. I, right. I, I agree with you completely. And then my favorite one is QSL, right? Because people are like, QSL, 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 QSL. You, you know, because the thing is, is, it can be a state, it can be a declaration or a question. Well, that's right. Like the F bomb. Like the F bomb. Each of them works exactly. both ways. So if I say, if I say QRZ, it's, you know, I'm ready for my next call. Or sure. if I say, you know, like QRZ, I'm calling you. If I say QSL, do, do I understand you? You respond back QSL. Yes. 
you understand me. Right. right. And and John it's makes a tradition. great point, and it's Don't part of the tradition. slide. Don't it's a carryover from Morse code days. The Q yeah. codes are, are were designed for Morse code, not for voice. And the same with RST on a repeater. I mean, you know, there's some other phrases you may use, and I think it's on the next slide, which I believe is our last slide. But, you know, you're not going to say, well, you're 594 on a repeater. But they do. You're coming in a 59. Or... The other the one is that uh, but, uh, I'm go oh, uh, hi, hi. Somebody tells a joke that ain't funny, and then they're like, hi, hi. And uh, that is a character. I've never heard that one. Okay. Are you serious? Good. I've never heard that one. No, uh-uh. They do that on HF a lot, you too. You've got but... many corners of your ham card left, Jim. I don't know. But the Telemundo okay. options aren't sound better. You've got the, but ham, the... the ham card octagon going on. But, but she, the thing... but she <laughs> couldn't do slides like this. <laughs> right. I don't the, care. Um... <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> In CW, ha 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 was abbreviated to high high because it was less clicks, and so it's a carryover, and people will actually say that. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. When they tell yeah. a joke, and instead of being like LOL hashtag LOL, they'll say hi hi. And CB lingo is just not a good idea anyway. You spent the time and effort to get a license. Don't talk like a trucker. And no offense to the truckers out there, because I know Richard may or may not be in the chat, and there's a couple others. Don't talk like you're on CB. For crying out loud i think it's mandatory that you talk like about that when well i mean if you want to get if you want to get the geritol <laughs> crowd all fired up of course half of them do it i guess come back 10 9 back to you on the side Don't, no no son and kyle's favorite please copy don't no you know i think i think that is on the next slide you know how do you get on the repeater you got your radio hooked up you want to make sure it's working and this goes for digital a lot as well digital voice as well too but you know if you're if you want to listen kilo november 4 yankee charlie delta monitoring or kn4 ycd listening whatever steve actually made a great point because i didn't think about it that way i'd say kn4 ycd but if i give my full phonetic call kazakhstan nigeria for yemen right um, you're putting more boom in the room son right it's longer and someone could hear you there's a better chance and get off the pot and and come into the radio right so you know so something like that or if you got a new radio whatever hey i got new radios anybody copy can anybody give me a signal report someone will generally come back to you and then a good way to respond to signal report requests on a repeater and these aren't standard but these all make sense to me loud and clear here you find or full quieting. My, you have a marvelous signal, sir, and you sound radio broadcast quality awesomeness, you know. Staticky picket fence. So that's going to be somebody's driving in a city and they're they're losing the signal and then coming back into the signal as they're driving. They're not holding the repeater, which means they might be at a far range and they're getting to the edge of coverage for the repeater with their radio set up. So they may occasionally catch it and then it drops out and then it comes back and low volume all those are fairly straightforward and they kind of explain what they mean one thing i hear is people say frying eggs you know people say how do i sound right. son and so it's like sounds like you frying eggs boy frying eggs yeah um, which, which means which static and crack static and yeah 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 bacon frying that's yeah that's the other one well, now that's a good thing bacon frying is the sound of god's love all this about talk to happen all this talk making me hungry I need to go fry some bacon. I had my chicken earlier, but now I'm thinking about something, something else. My old lady made some over. pasta last night. She's like, oh, I have this leftover this and this leftover that. What if I put this all together with Cajun sausage and some onions and peppers and put it together and put it in the cream sauce? Oh, man. So we need whatever this is called. We need to make this much more often. Mm -hmm. Cream sauce. I don't know what the, are you talking I don't know what you're talking about. Parmesan and milk and butter in a pan. Makes you mean a like an Alfredo? Like an Alfredo? Mm, it's not nearly as thick as an Alfredo, but yeah, like an Alfredo. It's like I'm sitting there right. playing cards with my brother's kids or something. You nerve exactly. sons of bitches. <laughs> that button. So that is not the last slide. This is the last slide. Oh, man. Sorry. I'm trying. Hey, but sorry. Keep going. Okay, okay. Um, break typically has a special meaning. Break is an emergency. It's not Ape and Steve are talking and they're 
saying something, Abe's saying some crazy flat earther thing. And I'm like, no, break. It's, crazy about it's that. a sphere. It's a sphere, you psychopath. No, break is an emergency. I thought and break was it, what you said on HF if you just wanted to join the conversation. Not an I'm, just, I'm going you by do a it document on, uh, I pulled off the You do it on repeaters too. You said break, break. And then they're supposed to welcome you into the conversation with open arms. See the I got this from somebody's radio club. I'd have to find the original document. They 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 do it here on the repeaters. You see, do if, they? if you if you hear a couple of fellers talking and they're doing the the typical pass it around the table around the horn thing, and you want to join in, what you would say is break break, or you could say your call sign breaky breaky. breaky yeah, break. now I've heard the call sign thing here is what I've heard. I've never heard anybody say break here, but well, break is I hear typical, the call sign. Well, like when they announce the net, they say, if you have something that you need to get on the repeater, if you right. need to use a repeater, then okay. say break, break. You should use it for, hey, I have some important stuff to add. If you just want to be like, I think I heard you talk about your antenna and verticals are no good, and you want to give an opinion, you probably should just say your call sign. Right. Mayday is, um, is Mayday. If y'all don't know what Mayday is, that's the international distress call. So you could hear that on a repeater. If you do, shut up and... Listen, figure out what they're doing and help them. This was like, a, I got this document from, and it's at work on my computer from somebody's ham radio club. And I thought it was a pretty good document, most of it. I kind of told us. Wrong. I don't think it's wrong. Break three times means an emergency. I'll go with but that. The thing is, is if somebody's given an update on their new antenna that they put up, it might be an emergency that you need to go in there and tell them that they did it incorrectly. That's it right, could correct. be, what, what if SHTFs 20 minutes later and they don't know that they did it wrong? Right. What if they wrapped that toroid incorrectly because yeah. they did not watch the ape video? Right. You have to get in there and let them know. Or they just fat fumble fingered the friggin' toroid when they wrapped it. Right. Right. Are you Ending still a conversation. By that, Jim? I was. <laughs> I still have nightmares about that damn toroid. Ending a conversation, and this goes for HF as well as repeaters. Seventy three for the love of all that is holy. 73s. Just seventy three, not seventy threes. Otherwise, you're saying kindest regards is. Mm -hmm. And then if you want another conversation, you might say KN4YCD monitoring. I'm still here. I'm still listening. Okay. I'll chat with you. Okay. I got a question for you. What if, what if Jim, you and I are having a QSO on a repeater, mm -hmm. and I'm really just tired of talking to you, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be in the car for another two hours, and I just don't want to talk <laughs> to you anymore. I don't want to say, like, all right, I'll be clear on your final. And then, like, because now I want to talk to the next guy. Yeah, then you're kind of screwed. I get those conversations. That's why you I need usually, a hotspot. <laughs> I usually lie and just go, man, I, I got to hit the bathroom. Or the old lady's calling me on my cell phone. Got to go. I'm, I'm getting out of repeater range. Jim, aren't you at home? Yeah. Oops. That's exactly. <laughs> you bust your shirt, said, what? Did you, you say I can't trust you? Right. So typically monitoring or clear means, clear means you're not available or out. And uh, I think it was in one of the slides. Don't say over between all your transmissions for crying out loud. People know when you're unkey and they can see on their radio that you've unkeyed and hear generally. So this is like some basic stuff. I really didn't want to go too deep into a lot of this. I mean, I did think I you did just fine, James. Well, I'm, I'm not, you know, did we, did we miss anything? Y'all got some stuff slide? to add? Is that that is slide? the last slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I think. He needs some milk. <laughs> there you go. I still need to edit that, but the best I can do during the show. That's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> little, 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 little Ryan, little don't you dare. Don't you dare, Ryan. What mm -hmm. did Ryan do? Ryan said he's going to give me 73s all the time. We drop an S on it. Right. <laughs> anyway. Please don't say what. Over. Yeah. What is the... What do we got coming up? We got the Lord Commander. We do uh, on Saturday. Up. On Saturday. And then uh, I don't know. What do you What do you guys think about opening this thing up and trying to make some QSOs with it tomorrow? Oh Lord! God oh, damn! Lord. Look at that. When are we doing that? When are we doing that? I was thinking tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Is it like a Friday night deal? Yeah. Yeah. What time? Work. I don't know. Need to make some plans, son. And, and Ape, you can use the the Toads call sign. Russian yeah, don't take to, a dump without a plan. I'll have to uh, file the paperwork. And, and I guess tomorrow I have to get outside and see what's up with that, my antenna. Something's wrong with my antenna. 
I couldn't Rut talk road. to I couldn't well, talk to my good friend Tio when he did his kilo search. And um, yeah, I was missing you in the log. Yeah, so I got to tell you, man, I turned my radio on and it was it was pegged. This, the North Forest was, was S nine, which it hasn't, it shouldn't be, right? It's never like that. And I sent a picture of my um, FT eight screen to Tio, and it was like one real faint line one, going right one down single. The middle. It's, <laughs> it's like, like it's I'm, laying on a, a trombone. power line or something. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it is, but I've got to. I've got to get out. Get go out back and start messing with it. You know, you got to put your cartana up, and you wouldn't have these problems. I right. should. I should just dig that. I, I was thinking I might put up the shouty fouty. Or tell T.O. or tell uh, HOA Karen, too bad, so sad. Here's my DX commander. You, you know, uh, YVY saying it's not in the schedule. I got to tell you, nobody uses the schedule anymore. So why, why, why worry about it, right? Right. Well, I have the offspring is with me tomorrow night. So I don't know if I would be available until gotcha. seven or eight ish. And then Charles maybe. is, uh, what was that TV? What was that movie called Wild Hogs? Yeah. 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 <laughs> is Charles out finding himself with other was, old people on motorcycles. What, what was that one that Chuck was in where he went back to the, the space program to rescue the like, Space Cowboys? Is that the one he was in? Yeah, Space Cowboys. But I think him and the and the boys are riding their motorcycles around, and the last picture was him in the in a hot spring with them, right? Wear nothing but uh, suntan lotion. Yeah. So it's kind of frightening. So Monday night, we don't have nuggets, Steve, right? On your nope. channel. Nope. I got to go to court on Monday. Oh, I got to be somewhere on Monday. <laughs> Wait, I got to do some row. paperwork. Rot row. And I'm not going to be available. So uh, I, I hmm. gave the reins to Jim. You'll be That's unavailable for like 30 days or 60 days or. Well, he's got a good lawyer. Yeah, so... it depends on. I mean, you taking some charges? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, no, I ain't taking no charges. That's what the lawyer's for. Okay. All right. You make sure you pay him in you pay him in the real you pay him in the real money, not that other stuff that I saw. In the real money. The Federal Reserve notes, man. Right. Right. So Monday night I will be doing not nuggets on my channel and it's gonna be kind of a QA. The plan is to have Mr. Derek Amrad podcast on there, Derek Broder. And we are going to talk about some oscilloscopes and antennas and radio stuff and whatever else the chat comes up with. I think Derek has some scope tricks he's lining up for us. We might um, poop on a nano VNA. Better not. We will. We will. We'll talk That's about it about you words. too. Mm -mm. Yeah, he, he bought all... one. I think he said he wasn't too happy with it, but I think he got one of them. One did of them swap the, meat. Did he get the rig expert branded nano VNA? Yeah, I think so he got a swap meat happy? nano VNA. <laughs> Yeah. I think I just pissed off both of our fans. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, look at this. Craig showed up. How you doing, buddy? It's been a while. I hadn't seen you around. No uh, doubt. Hope all's well, bud. Right. So, uh, so Ape, what have you got? You just dropped a video today. He's I back. did on uh, him radio antennas. Uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, did you hate all over ham sticks? <laughs> no, I didn't even mention ham sticks. But here's the thing: like when you publish a YouTube video, you have to go through a checklist and swear that there's no drug use, no right. talking about things that are bad for people's health, and you know, just no swearing, no nudity, and all that kind of stuff. And the last question that they ask you is: Is there anything controversial in this video? <laughs> yeah, wow. It's and I'm like, son, it's a ham is. radio video. The entire thing is controversial. <laughs> Take a pause. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. right. You know, somebody's going to be upset no matter what I say about and um. But I said it wasn't, so it's uh, it's posted today, and then and YouTube then, lets you through. Okay. Yeah, I, I do have a video coming out where I'm going to show five different ways to do the same thing. I figure I will get everybody with that one. Uh, listen, all you have to do is crimp one wire, and uh, right. they, they they come out they come out of the woodwork. And then I'm also going to be working on the video for this thing tomorrow, the LC meter. Uh, a new. I thought you you've Liberty done a video on that before. I, we've, oh we've, my gosh! Look, I didn't even realize this is the one I've had the entire time. It's it's got a Juntex sticker on there. I had nice. no idea. What, Juntex sent me one. <laughs> sent me one, um, and I had been I have been asked a few times to do a review on this. So it has been the a day. fixture on the channel. He's yeah, used it quite a lot, but he's never done a video directly on it. I guess right. not. I guess not. I've got well, look. I got this one... little. I got this little board of parts here. I got some. I rolled up some inductors of measure. I got some that, caps over. Ti These yeah, are tiny. Look. Look at that. All we're going to embiggen you. Let's let's see that again. Yeah, hold that up. Ooh, looky, looky. So I got two inductors that I rolled here. The same size wire, same number of turns. Inductors. You roll Just your different, own. 
just different different sizes and then i got a couple of caps here that we can test and then actually have a component inductor here so okay it'll be a fun time for everybody involved oh, what Todd's kind of caps are idea. those that you've got i like this idea todd w w what's that what kind of caps are those that you've got on there were those are those tantalum Silver or caps i'm sorry Micah. what are the what capacitors they're what also kind of your son. Get some better monitors act professional I was reading no, this. I didn't understand what Todd was saying. You need to you need to do a pseudo account, and do videos to, <laughs> diametrically opposed to your normal videos. That means like, opposite. Like, okay, I thought he was said. I saw, thought it said dramatically. I don't have my reading glasses. Either well, every, one everything you good. do is dramatic. Either I one, mean, fine. It, yeah, either way. I do that. I do that at work, like when I'm in the conference and stuff, and I act all silly about it. Like we'll be talking about something, I'll speak dramatically, and they and they get upset at me when I do it. I want to see a dramatic toroid building. In well, the it's style be a, of a Shakespeare, flat earth and a round Earth video. There you go. That'd be a good one. one oh, we can see. Look here, Don, Don's like Don's like. How do you eliminate the natural induction of the breadboard? And it's very simple. I will take the inductor and I will pull it out, and then I'll hook it up to the meter. The breadboard here is just used to hold Storage. things in place so I don't lose them. Storage. <laughs> it's good to see him trolling you a little bit. That's awesome, Don. Thank you, <laughs> Don. Listen, I thought we had take an a deep breath, Jim. You're coming next. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got to end this thing pretty fast. I've got at least one video going to drop this weekend on um, a battery go box kind of setup, and I've got a couple other plans. I may get those done. Yeah, you know, I got I a monster size a, battery showing up here on Monday. I, I was too busy doing my kilo over the weekend that I wasn't able to get my normal Tuesday video out, so I apologize. I, okay, I thought you had like a whole ton of them recorded, and you just. Had your production company build shush, them all and shush. don't let the secrets out. I didn't even think you were in half of them. I thought it was just like, you know, a CGI representation or something. <laughs> My hologram. Because I still don't know how you put out all them Zygu 6100 videos so fast. It's like, does he eat? He's got a that's job. I lost six pounds doing those videos. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Literally, that's what all meth cooks say. I lose uh, six pounds. But you also lost two to tones on that. Like, you know when you go and you pick out paint and it has like the blue that's dark and then the light blue and all the different tones in between. Uh, lost, you lost two tones. Started, started losing this, <laughs> which, which is pretty bad in Wisconsin. There ain't much of it left in the winter. Ooh. And, and one last thing I got to mention. Steve said it was 48 degrees in Luck, Wisconsin this yep. morning. I turned the heat on already. Son, it was Lordy. 97 in Montgomery, Alabama today. I was, I was cutting the grass today wearing a winter coat because the lawnmower goes so fast. <laughs> Get that breeze going. Ooh, so you still have grass to cut, but it was that cold outside. Well, no, I'm, I'm just lazy. That's why I still have grass to cut. It was, it was okay. Well, I, that's I accept lazy. Hell, I worship at the altar of, I prefer to call it procrastinate indefinitely but hey, hey why put off till tomorrow what you can put off indefinitely right exactly hey, you, you boys need to wind this thing up you know we're we're 19 it's minutes over the minnesota goodbye yeah all right guys thank you all Cheers for stopping awesome. by tonight had a great time Ape, thanks Steve, everybody it was awesome it. i'll I'm remember this moment together forever painkillers kicked in in my heart just now oh it's just hitting now. the button uh, later guys <laughs>